sizzle, which, you know, I love the sizzle. What the heck are you doing? Are you freaking crazy? Where's my respond card? Hey, and here it is, respond. Real quick. Come on, guys. Making me look bad. Hey, welcome back. It's me, Martin Salama, the architect of the Warriors Life Code. Live incredibly full every day. And I'm here cooking again, which is something I really love to do for so many reasons. And I'm enjoying it, and I'm inviting you into my kitchen to cook with me. Today, we are going to be cooking fall off the bone beer braised short ribs. It could also be made with red wine, but today I'm going to make it with beer braised short ribs. And also, I'm going to talk about something that I think many of you might relate to. And uh, it comes from my own experience and something that I developed as a result of recognizing some of the things that were holding me back for almost 50 years. And once I understood it and I was able to internalize it and do some things around it, it made my life so much better. And that was, I had a short temper. And a lot of that came from being a people pleaser, being a control freak, always needing to make sure that everything was going the right way and being taking everything personally. So I always would react to everything. I, I would shoot first and ask questions later. And then I'd have to figure out how to fix that. And many of the times I would do it. I'm so, so sorry I did this. I'm so sorry I did this. But you know, this was going on or that was going on. Or you did this to get me mad. That's not an apology. That's rationalizing. Or like I say, rationalize. Rational lies. You're lying to yourself that it's rational for you to say something or do something that goes against what you should be doing or making an excuse, which is really, you know, you're saying it's a reason, but it's really an excuse in disguise. But anyway, we'll get to more of that after. So what we do now is we're going to take these uh, short ribs that I've seasoned with salt and pepper and let's sit for about an hour outside of the fridge so that, and they have the salt and pepper in them. And these are called English cut short ribs. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to brown them. Uh, on, on each side for a few minutes before we go further with it. So I'm going to stick them in now. I put just a drop of oil, less than a tablespoon of oil in here because the meat itself will give a lot, will, will render a lot of fat out. And it's going to sizzle, which you know I love the sizzle. Okay, here we go. I'm going to put them in. Four to six pieces. When I uh, asked the butcher today for it, uh, he gave me seven pieces. I told him how much I wanted in pounds and he gave me about seven pieces. It's all good. You don't want to crowd the, the, the Dutch oven, so you put them in like this. And it'll take a few minutes on each side. And I want to tell you an interesting story about these short ribs. With everything going on around in the world, prices are getting crazy. And in kosher, it's even more expensive. And over the years, I've always said, oh, kosher is because the rabbi blesses it. There's so much more to it. Maybe one episode, I'll get into it. But there's a lot more to being kosher than just the rabbi blessing it. Uh, and, and so, so, and then even glot kosher is another level, which is the highest, highest, strictest form of, of kashrut, as we say, or kosher. So I went, I, uh, this morning, my, my stepson Ralph asked me to drive him to school. It was raining. So I said, okay, fine, I'll drive you to school and I'll stop at that, the store that's near his school. He goes to Yeshiva of Flappish. And it's on Coney Island Avenue, around Avenue J. I'm not gonna tell you exactly the name of it. I said, okay, I'll buy the short ribs from there. And I walked into the store and I'm buying stuff and I'm picking the peppers for something else and the, and the carrots and whatever. And I'm looking at the prices and they're all like ridiculous. The peppers were $7.99 a pound. And then I walk up to the meat uh, display. I pull out the, 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 the short ribs and I almost freaked out. It was $40 a pound. I was like, I'm not spending $40 a pound. And I know the people out there that are not Jewish are saying, are you freaking nuts? Well, it's part of what it is to be kosher and to be Jewish and all that stuff. So I said, no, I'm not doing it. I put everything back. I put the pepper back. I was, I was rationalizing, okay, I'll get the pepper because I don't want to go somewhere else, even though I knew I didn't want to spend that much money. So now I'm going to flip these over to the other side to get some more of it done. We want to brown them on all, all sides. These, they're looking fantastic already. And the, and the stove is on about medium to medium high. All right, just so you know what I'm doing here. So I, I got into the car and I said, okay, fine, I'll, I'll go somewhere else. And I call my butcher and I say, Scott, how much, how much is short ribs these days? He tells me 
I'm like, okay. I said, because I went to this other place. I told them the name and they were $40. He goes, oh my God, that's crazy. So I went to Scott and I got the, I got the short ribs. And it's not about being cheap. It's about being smart. And I didn't freak out, which is part of what's going on here. I sh the old me would have went up to the to the butcher guy in the in the in that supermarket, that kosher supermarket, and said, "What the heck are you doing? Are you freaking crazy?" I didn't do it. I said, "I'll come up with something else." So one of the things that happened as I went through coach training and started to become more aware, self-aware, from self-conscious to self-aware, and I've talked about that before. If you're not, you go back and look. And I came up with this, with this idea and I was working with somebody on how to put together my courses and stuff. And he said, so what did you do to get out of that mindset? And I said, you know, you know when your kids go to school and they learn from the firemen about fire safety? He said, yeah. And I said, what are the three words that they come up with? He said, um, stop, drop and roll. Stop, to the, stop what you're doing, drop to the floor under the smoke and roll away from the emergency, from the fire. I said, yeah. I said, so I basically came up with a different way of using that same thing in a different way. And I came up with stop, think, and respond. So in my card deck, which I've talked about before, I break it down. Stop, think, and respond. And then I have a card for stop, think, where's my respond card? Hey, and here it is, respond. <laughs> and then there's also another card, and I'll get to that in a minute. I want to flip these over again. I don't want to get too well done in here because it's just about browning them. It's not about cooking them fully through. The browning gives it an extra level of flavor when you're, when you're, when you're eating these later. And this is, it, they, they literally fall right off the bone. And it's the easiest recipe. It's got such, such few ingredients, it's crazy. I'll tell you the ingredients in a minute. Of course, you know, we've got the short ribs, okay? And we've got beer. So. We need three cups of beer, so this is about 25 ounces, it's close enough, 24 ounces, three cups. And it's got one large onion sliced, six to eight garlic cloves, all right? And then salt, pepper, and paprika. And I said, I just put a drop of oil just on the bottom of it. And these things are looking really, really great. So I came up with this thing, stop, think, and respond. So what is it? So imagine you get, find yourself into a situation where in the past, it would be a confrontation instead of a conversation. And you go, what the heck am I doing here? What the heck? And, and every time you do that, you go into a thing and you confront the people and after a while, the people don't want to know from you anymore. They're tired of having conversations with you because they know it's going to get into some type of argument, some kind of fight, and so on and so forth. So, and that was me. Nobody wanted to talk to me. I was losing my friends after my divorce and all that. And Part of it was for a lot of different reasons, but part of it was because I needed to recognize what I was doing right and what I was doing wrong. And that's where coaching came in. And they taught me that I could change who I was and become somebody different and the default tendencies I had to change. So I said, okay, great. And I started working on it. And I recognized that once now that I'm aware of it, if I stop for a minute and instead of react, I take a minute and I think about what's going on is this important to me? Or am I taking it personally? What's the bigger picture here? Is it about them or is it about me? And then respond, things will go different. So I'm gonna let these finish up for a little here and I'm gonna come back in a minute. Uh, and what we're gonna do is I'm gonna let these finish up and then I'm gonna do the next step which is to sweat out the onions and stuff like that. But I'll come back in the middle of that because you don't need to see the whole thing. Yet. I'll be back. Welcome back. So the onions have now, I've taken the, the, um, the short ribs out of the, out of the Dutch oven, right? And I put them to the side on back onto this uh, cutting board that I used to spice them with salt and pepper. And I put the onions and the garlic in here and they've been, they've been in here for about five minutes. I lowered the fire to about medium and I put them in here to about five minutes. So they got, um, translucent and, you know, uh, soft and, 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 you know, not so rigid. So now that that's been doing that for about almost five minutes, what we're going to do next is I'm going to add some more salt and pepper. And by the way, I use the same Dutch oven because the bottom is filled with all of the extra pieces that came off of the came off of the um, the meat. So it's it's fantastic. And then take some little salt and pepper and add it in here. I like I love to use fresh pepper. 
as opposed to just, you know, doing the shaker. And then, uh, and some paprika. So I put, oh, look at that. Never been used yet before. All right, we'll take this off real quick. Come on, guys. Making me look bad. So before I go on, I'll, you know, so I'm going to do this with the pepper, paprika now. Here we go. Come on off. Put that to the side. Uh, I want to explain to you a little bit about how I was in the past and give you a little bit of an example. So we'll just sprinkle a bunch of paprika in here. Then I'm going to let that all mix together. And then I'm going to add the beer. Okay. So just to give you an idea of who I was before. So in the past, in my first marriage uh, with my former wife, and this is not an indication on her. This is me. Okay, me taking responsibility. She would come to me and she'd say something like, there's something bothering us. She would say, I don't want to fight, but, and for me, that was a hot button. It was like, okay, let's get ready. I don't mean physically, I mean emo mentally, emotionally. I was ready, I was like, okay. And I would start to fight. Whatever she said, the next thing, I was ready to go. And then it was easy for her to say, you see, you started this fight. And as I was going through coaching, I recognized that that was on me. As I was becoming more aware of the things that were affecting me, I said, oh, wait a minute. So she would call me during our divorce and say, you know, I got to talk to you about something. I don't want to fight, but, and at first what I would do is I would hang up on her. I'd say, okay, well, I'm not going to fight. She'd go, what the heck did you just do? I go, well, you said you didn't want to fight. So I hung up and I conditioned myself and her, believe it or not. So this, I, I put the, the, the peppers, the beer in. Uh, and it's going to deglaze the bottom of the pan and I'm going to leave it in here for about a minute or two just to deglaze it and, and get all the goodness going together. And then I'm going to put the, the, the meat back in. And I would say, and then slowly I conditioned myself and her to recognize that that doesn't work. Using those words weren't working. And we changed and it took time. It took a lot of time and that's what I want to get to you now. So. Where did I put my cards? Here. So I have the Stop, Think, and Respond cards. And then I came up with a card which I call the Stop, Think, and Respond scorecard. So what happened was, is during COVID, one day my wife Sarita and her son Ralph, at the time he was about 13, 14 years old, about 13 years old, almost 13, uh, they went out to play basketball. And there's a game that we used to play when we were kids and they were playing. It's called 5 3 1. The idea of the game is 5. You take a, a, a foul shot, you hit it, you get five points. Then you run to get the ball wherever it lands. If it doesn't go in, it could go anywhere. You get it, you, you get the rebound, and you take a shot from wherever you get the ball. That's three points. And then you take a layup and you get one point. If you did all three, you get 10 points. So they went out to play. They came back. I said, how was the game? They said, Sarita won 100 to nothing. I said, how the heck did that happen? So Ralph said, I kept on missing the free star. So I decided I'll just keep going. It's not really the way the game worked, but instead of going for some of the little shots and accumulating points, he just went for the big thing all the time. So I said, you know what? I love that idea. And it into my stop thinking response. And I said, let's flip it. If you stop, so you take out the card and you go, okay, when you stop, give yourself one point. Why one point? Because your action was minor compared to the other steps in the big picture. Two, when you think about how to approach the situation, give yourself three points. When you respond in a calm and sensible manner, give yourself five points. Now you've accumulated nine points. How to get the bonus 10 points to the perfect 10? When you reflect on the situation and decide if the outcome was better than it was, than it would have been in the past, if the answer is yes, award yourself the extra point for 10 points. So now I started doing that and I said, okay, great. This is really fantastic. How do I do this now? What happens if I do the first time anybody's going to do this, they're going to fail. They're definitely going to go into fight, into, into fight mode. I said, okay, but what happens if the next day they look it over and they go, wait a minute, I, I could have done that better because now they're more aware of what they might've done. I said, great. So now we're building, we're building muscle memory on you for what's going on and for that you become a better person in, in conversations instead of confrontations, like I said before. So now you look back over to you go, okay, huh, this is what I did. Wow. So I'm going to lower the fire, lower the fire to simmer for 20 minutes. You're not going to be sitting here for 20 minutes. I promise. Lower the fire, simmer 20 minutes. And then, uh, I'm going to put it in the oven. I preheated the oven 
for two and a half hours at 350. So I'll come back after the end of it and show you some more of that. So I said, imagine if you came back the next day and recognized what was working and what wasn't working. And you said, okay, great. Now I've, I've fixed myself up a little bit and I've gotten a better handle on the stuff. And you go, okay, great. So you stopped, give yourself one point. Now, if you think about the situation and write down, this is the situation, this is what happens, write down on the scorecard, or you can make your own scorecard, you know, with the same idea. Write down, okay, why did I do this? What was going on? All the things I talked about earlier. And then, here's the beauty. If you go back to that person that you had the confrontation with and call them up and say, hey, Bob, I'm so sorry. I, I acted this way. This was happened, and I shouldn't have done it, and I'm sorry, and I'd like to uh, offer an apology to you. With nothing expected back, with no excuses, no justifications, no rationalizing. You'll feel better, they'll feel better. Give yourself the extra five points. And because you did all that, give yourself one point more. So you have 10 points. Now, the next time it happens, you probably won't do it well either. But maybe you'll stop and then do the other thing. Give yourself one point. It's about building momentum so that every time you do this, you get better and better and better. Anyway, I'm gonna come back afterwards. Uh, this is gonna sit up for 20 minutes, I'm gonna put it in the oven, and then I'll show you what it looks like. It's really something delicious. See you soon. So welcome back. Uh, it's been a little over two hours, about two hours and 10 minutes. I like to check it in the middle because sometimes it takes a little faster to cook and that was the case today. And um, what I did is I took it out of the oven. I'm gonna show you what it looks like. Here it is. That's the, 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 and now I'll show you. That's the short ribs and look. Look at this. It literally fell right off the bone and it's fork tender. I don't know if you see that the bone fell right off and it's fork tender. It's really fantastic. So I'm very excited about this. This will be part of tonight's Friday night dinner. I'm sticking that back in there. Not that I have to put the bone back in, but I did anyway. This will go into the sink. We'll wash that afterwards. And uh, I really, I really hope you enjoyed this cooking that we did here today. Uh, so thank you so much for, for joining me. And let's just go over for a minute what we talked about. Stop, think, and respond. Anytime you feel, find yourself getting into a confrontation, think about turning it into a conversation. And for now, take advantage of just what I talked about. Next time somebody comes to you and you're ready to pounce, to go freaking out, think about what I talked about here. Stop what's going on. Instead of re reacting, think about it. Think, think about it. What's going on, say, is this about me? Is it about them? Am I taking it personally? Look, I was the biggest guy, took everything personally. And then respond, find a way. And if it doesn't work, it's okay. It's muscle memory, it's building it. It's part of my cards. You can order the cards, go to connectwithmartin.com. You'll see what to do there to connect with me on them. It's exciting what I'm doing here. I'm hoping that you're liking all these. Tell me below, subscribe down below, comment, tell me what else you want me to talk about, tell me what else you want me to cook. Anyway, have a great day, enjoy life, and don't forget to live incredibly full every day, and Shabbat Shalom.